Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. Without further ado, let's get right into it, shall we? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we thank you. Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord, how you brought us through, how you kept us all this time, Lord God, and how you to, and how you continue to keep us, Lord God. Personally, Lord God, I'm, I'm grateful that you got me out of jail and kept me out of prison, kept me out of, out of, out of death, Lord God, got me out of, out of suicide, out of, out of, who, out of suicide, out of addiction, Lord God, out of, out of sexual immorality lord god out of all type of all type of sinful behavior god you brought me out of those things i'm personally grateful for those things god lord we thank you for for all the times lord god when we fell short but your loving arms never closed lord god and cast us out lord god you have cast your people out in the past lord god for things they've done lord god but you don't, but you've never cast us out permanently, Lord God. As long as we're still breathing, there's a chance to come back to you, God. So help us all to turn our lives over to you, to turn our will over to you, Lord God, to surrender our heart to you, Lord God, and to obey you and keep your commands, God, so that we may be saved and sanctified and filled with your Holy Spirit, God, so that we most importantly may have everlasting life with you in paradise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Today's scripture is coming from Exodus chapter 20, verse 18 to 21. <clears throat> now all the people witnessed the thunderings the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then they said to Moses, you speak with us, and we will hear. But don't let God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to test you, and he has come that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. So the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. These things happen right here in Exodus 20, verse 18 through 21. This stuff happened immediately after they were given the Ten Commandments. 
Exodus chapter 20, verse chapter 20, verse 1 through 17 is the Ten Commandments. Now, yeah, that, I think that's, I hope I'm not telling you wrong. I'm, that's what I'm thinking. All those verses, yeah. Stop at verse 17, yeah. So Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 17, those are the Ten Commandments. After they give, after, after Moses give them the Ten Commandments, after they get, after they receive the Ten Commandments, all this stuff going on. Uh, God showing mighty sounds and visuals, stuff to hear, stuff to see that scares them. You know how when it, when it lightning and it thunder, boom, you know, the boom around the house, it shake the house and it's scary, it's scary. It boom. People jump, people get scared. I remember my great grandma used to tell me, uh, don't talk on the phone. You know, not we didn't have cell phones back then. So when I say phone, don't get confused. Uh don't talk on the phone. Uh the landline. She said, Don't talk on the phone while it's uh thundering and lightning outside while Lord working. Um, don't have a TV on while Lord working. You no, know, we we'll just sit up in there in the quiet. Just sit there. You know what I'm saying? Nothing, you know, let, let the Lord do his work. And that be the end of now, I, even though I mean there are other uh you know, cautions. This it T V on and the phone on, you can get hurt by lightning and stuff like that. That's nowadays. That's what they say the reason is. But I think that you should be doing any of those things. You shouldn't even be sitting there doing any of those things while um uh, while the Lord is working, you know what I'm saying? I got to get back to that, to 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 that, you know, because the Lord is truly working when he, when that's going on. Ain't nobody else can create no thunder and lightning but the Lord. And so all that stuff was scary. And that's what these people saw here on the mountain after they got the Ten Commandments. They also saw smoke, you know what I'm saying, and, all, and, and a sound of a trumpet. And all this, they heard a lot of things, a lot of sounds, a lot of sights to see. And they heard a lot and saw a lot and they, they was afraid. They they the, the fear but, but guess what? Uh this was this was so that the people would fear God and not rebel against his commandments. The fear of the Father is a wonderful thing. To fear the Father is a wonderful thing. And I equate that to um uh, my children. <clears throat> my child specifically the younger one, uh, but uh, but I, my other children, they they live in rebellion. I think they live in rebellion. A lot of people live in rebellion. You know, they don't they want they want to buck the system. They want they don't want to do what the system says. They don't want you know what I'm saying. I'm t well, they look they they buck the system, and sometimes the system is wrong. But I think when it comes to parenting, uh, the parent is right. You know, the parent is right, but the parent need to be right with his father or her father need to be right in the Lord. And so if you don't have the Lord as the head, then those underneath you are going to get the wrong instructions. You can say, well, it's good moral standard. I remember um, on Facebook, uh, somebody posted something about, give me a hundred things a child, a uh, 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 father should teach his child. So, no, father should teach his son. And they said, they're just naming things off. The minute somebody said, teach him about Jesus, everybody started to bash him. Somebody said, teach him about Jesus. They start throwing stones. What are you talking about Jesus? Don't bring Jesus in this conversation. This and that, this and that. But the truth is, if Jesus is not in the conversation, in the life, in the hearts, in the faith of the father or the mother, they're not going to teach their children the right thing. No matter what you teach your child that you think is good, if it's rebellious against the Lord, it's not good. And I'll, I'll take that to the grave there. No matter what you teach your child in his life, if it goes against the Lord Jesus, if it go against the, 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 the creator and his will, his commands, his standard, his moral, you're wrong. You're wrong for anything you teach somebody that go against God. Bottom line, and the Bible say that, I didn't make that up. Deuteronomy chapter six, he says, Teach these things to your children. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 5 is the Ten Commandments again. Deuteronomy chapter 6, he come in and say, teach these things to your kids. When you go to sleep, when you say when you lay down, when you rise up, when you're walking by the way, when you're coming in, write them on the doorpost, write them on your forehead, put them here, put them there, teach them then, teach them now, teach them over here, teach them over there. 
all the time teach your children these things. God has always said it. And I stand with that because that's what the scripture says. All throughout the Bible tells you to teach your children the ways of the Lord. Um, the ways of the Lord are right. And man's ways are wrong when it goes against what the Lord says. Bottom line. I don't try to take the Bible and manipulate it for my own personal gain. I say, well, Lord, I just can't, I can't hold up to that standard, Lord. I'm going to fail you with this standard. Show me what to do, how to do it, Lord. But I never say, well, the Bible is wrong. I should do it this way. Never. I fear God too much to do that. I love God and appreciate God too much to do that. Two reasons for the same thing. I love him, so I'm not going to do it. I fear him, so I'm not going to do it. People say, I love God, so I'm going to be good. But they don't fear God enough to, 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 to repent for their sins. They don't fear God enough to, to, to be afraid to continue in sin. They don't fear God enough to, to do something intentionally against the Lord's commands and then uh, and then go on living without remorse. They go on and, con and continue doing it without even uh, without even second guessing it. They don't fear God enough to turn away from his commands, but they love him enough to say, well, I love him enough to know that he loved me and I can continue in my sin. That ain't what God said. You see what God, God put fear in the people's hearts. Right here in Exodus chapter 20, he put fear in their hearts so that they would not sin. See, God struck them with fear. He did these things so that they would not sin. The fear of the Father is a wonderful thing. In fact, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That simply means that it's wise to fear what the Lord can do. It's wise. God's love is a wonderful thing too. I love God because of what he did for me. I fear God because of what he can do to me based on what he did in times past to the other disobedient, rebellious children. And you can go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Just start at verse 1 and read verse 1 through 8. I, cannot, I was a little disappointed this morning. Because I could not find the other scripture that I wanted. God led me to this one here. I found this one. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 8. When he talks about they did all, they were all under under the, the rock of Jesus Christ. They were all baptized in the same cloud, the same drinking food in the Old Testament. But then they turned against God and God and they died there in the desert. God and, and then they go on to say they rose up and played and he killed 20,000 of them. You know, he is and for, for what they did. But I, I think, I thought, I think that there was a verse that uh that puts it all into one passage. Right here, you got to read half of 1 Corinthians, first chapter 10. You know what I'm saying? But I think there was a verse that says, God, I, I, can't, I thought it was in Hebrews. It may be in Revelation. I'm not sure. It may be Timothy or somebody else saying, I'm in Timothy. Is, I don't know who said it. That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I know it's in the New Testament. But what he says is, uh, whoever he 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 is, he, whoever he is who said it, it's definitely a he. But uh, he said, um, um, uh, uh, God brought them out. He saved them from from. He, it says God brought them out and saved them from Egypt, but then destroyed them for their disobedience. That's what it simply says that, and not in those words says he brought them out of Egypt and saved them from Egypt, but he destroyed them. I can't I can't Google that, you know, or search it up because when I mention Egypt or something, it shows me Old Testament scriptures. So I'm going to have to get my concordance, look up the word Egypt, and find it in the New Testament. You know what I'm saying? Or you say, and, and I'll be able to find it. I can't do it for you right now, but Lord willing, I will be able to do it. <clears throat> Those words are tiny, and it's, uh, it just can't get it. But, but, but the thing is, God saved them out of slavery. They rebelled against them, and then he destroyed them. Just like that is what the Bible says. This verse right here, 1 Corinthians, shows the same thing uh, for, for rebelling against him, for being disobedient to his commandments. So just because you created by God don't mean that you already automatically have a one-way ticket to paradise. Just because you uh, your skin color black don't mean you automatically got a one-way ticket to paradise, like some people believe. Just because you are, just because you are a Jew by blood. Don't mean you have a one-way ticket to paradise, just like a, a, a one-way ticket to paradise, like some people think. You must place your faith in Jesus Christ to get your one-way ticket 
That's your one-way ticket to paradise, Jesus Christ. But guess what? If you jump off the Jesus train, if you get on the Jesus train, you just ride it out until you go, and that's it. But if you jump off the Jesus train and go the other way, guess what? You in the in the train. Woo. Jesus talks about the wise and the foolish virgins. He says the five wise ones they were ready when the master came. The fool, the five what, foolish virgins were gone when the master came. They were gone, off doing something else because they weren't prepared. So I want to say this: be prepared, be live your life like Jesus coming back to, today. Live your life like every day you wake up. Say, the Lord might come back today. Let me live for the Lord today. Then when you go to sleep at night, if you don't come, just live tomorrow like you're going to come, and every day after that. But when you ever get so so comfortable and complacent where you say he ain't coming back, some of them said that some say he ain't coming back for a long time. Don't get complacent and comfortable and say, oh. Don't get too comfortable and complacent and say, he's not coming back. I can do what I want to do because the Lord is coming back like a thief in the night. Don't let him catch you with your pants down. Don't let him catch you with your hand in the cookie jar. You know what I'm saying? Don't let him catch you in your trespasses because then you, then he might, he might reveal to you, he might reveal knowledge to you that you never feared him and you never served him and you never knew him in the first place. Jesus ain't gonna say, get away from me. I knew you, and then you then I didn't know you, or you knew me. Jesus is gonna say, get away from me, because I never knew you. It's already, it's already known who knows him and who doesn't know him. So if your hand in a cookie jar when he comes, maybe you just maybe you thought you knew him. <laughs> maybe if you, if he come back and catch you with your pants down, maybe you was pretending like you knew him all your life. See what I'm saying? He, he don't make any mistakes. He know what's in your heart, and he know that. Uh, he won't. He and he know that those who fear him and keep his commands are, are the wise ones. Um, the problem today, well, I almost skipped one part. God does not desire that any of us should perish, but that all of us should repent. Second Peter chapter three verse nine says, "The Lord is not slack." No, let me back up to eight. To the Lord, one day is a thousand years. And to the Lord, a thousand years is one day. I can't explain it on, on simple terms, but when, when when you go to sleep and wake up one night, God could have done a thousand years work in your going to sleep and waking up. And guess what? That, and God, and that thousand years it takes for 10 generations of people to live, God look at that like it's one day. Don't even bother him. You know what I'm saying? It's one day to him. He, they don't, they don't, he's not, he's not, um, he's not by uh, time. He's not, he's not, um, mm, He's not, he's not limited to time, space, no matter. He, he, he's time. Time does not uh, control God. You know, he created time for us. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, <clears throat> and so he doesn't want any of us to perish uh, a thousand days, one day to him, one day to him, a thousand days to us, uh, a thousand years, one day, you know? And so it says, he is not willing that any of us should perish. He said, the Lord is not slack as some count slackness. He's not slacking like some count slackness, but he's coming back. He doesn't, he, he, he is not willing that any of us should perish, but that all of us should come to repentance. Jesus wants us to be forgiven for our sins. God wants us to be forgiven for our sins, and he's given us time and time to be impatient with us. But the scripture says, when the number of the Gentiles is reached, when he reaches all the people, when, when his word goes out and touch all the people and he and he preached the word to all those who are going to believe, he's going to bust through the cloud. Boom. The father's going to say, all right, go get him, Jesus. <laughs> oh, he come through the cloud with his angels. And it ain't going to be, well, he over there or he over here. Everybody going to see it. It's not going to be like you have a lightning storm in that state and sun in that, no, a lightning storm in that city and, a, and, and the sun in that city and snow in another city. The whole world going to see it all at once. It's not going to be. It's going to be all at once when it come. Guess what? It ain't going to be no sun or no moon and all that stuff. He's going to be the light. That's how everybody going to see it. And so he's coming like a thief in the night. <clears throat> and uh, the, the problem today, the, the problem today is that when something happens, people credit luck or chance instead of acknowledging God and, and seeking him. They say, well, this happened because of luck. Or, he got bad luck or or she just got good luck, or 
chance happens. And the Bible tells us chance happens to everyone. It tells us that. But guess what? It has to go through God first. Everything has to go through God first. That's what the Bible says. Everything got to go through God. Everything got to go through God. Nothing is, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Keep a watch on the good and the evil. Not just the good only. He is watching over the good only. And, and he, he's watching over the good and the evil. And also he just got his eye on the evil only. He got his eye on the evil and the good. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. That's what it says. And so, and so uh, God has put everything in order so that we will turn away from sin and turn towards him. When we run, when we turn towards God, we acknowledge that we have sinned and that Jesus is the only way to be forgiven. See, that's the problem with some people. They don't think they sin. They're deceiving themselves. They might be deceiving you, but they're not deceiving me because I know better. I know the Bible says all of us have sinned. Everybody's sinned. You, him, her, them, me, us. All of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And so when you when you when you um when you turn away from sin and turn towards God, you say, Lord, I I'm a sinful person. I have a sinful nature. I need to be forgiven. Will you forgive me? And you come to him. Say, God, I don't want to be like that anymore. A lot of people want to continue doing what they do. They don't think anything wrong with it. I see people who are love. They don't think anything wrong with it, man. They don't think anything's wrong with it. When you think something's wrong with what you're doing, you're going to tell God, I'm wrong for doing this, God. Please, Lord, stop me from doing this. Please help me to stop from doing this. Please take away this desire from me. But they say, well, I love God. God love me. I can keep doing it. Yeah, you might love God, but you don't fear God. The Bible from the beginning, Genesis to Revelation, tell us to fear God. Fear God. Fear God. Fear and love is not the same thing. Those two words are not interchangeable in this book right here. Fear and love are not the same in the Bible. Fear is to fear God. Love is to love God. You showed your love by God, by your love towards God, by obeying his commandments. And worshiping him and praising him and be rejoicing in him. You show your fear towards God by obeying him and trembling before him, knowing what he can do, knowing what he has done, knowing his power. See, that you got to have both of these toward God, man. You it can't be one without the other. You got you got to have, they're not the same thing, but you have to have love towards God and fear towards God. You have to have both of them, according to the word of God. When we turn towards him, we know that Jesus is the only way to be that we can be forgiven for our sins. That's God's plan. That's always been God's plan from the beginning. Go and read Genesis. Go and read Genesis chapter 2. He already talking about what Jesus is going to do. The plan is already in place. Jesus ain't even born yet in the flesh, and God's already got the plan in motion. The plan was already set in motion probably before they even um, sinned. You know what I'm saying? When God probably created them, so yeah, they're going to sin right here at this point in time. I'm going to tell them about it right here, and then I'm going to do something about it right here. God probably already said, knew what they were going to do, and I already put the plan in place way before they even existed. I'm saying probably, but I know that God is not uh, limited to time, and he, he, and he already had it in order. <clears throat> so that's his plan. That's always been his plan. That's always going to be his plan. So I'm going to let you go here. I'm going to say this, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Trust him, obey him, and keep his commandments. These are the keys to life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for putting fear in my heart to obey your commandments, Lord. No matter how many times I fail, no matter how many times I succeed, Lord, thank you for placing fear in my heart to obey your commandments, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for putting love in my heart to love you and worship you and praise you. No matter how many times I, I get disappointed in how things go, no matter how many times I'm angry, I think about our children. Well, I think about our daughter who get mad at me. 
when I say something she doesn't like or when I give her instruction that she doesn't want to do or when she's when I, when I do something that she don't believe should be done in that manner. I think about that, God, and I say I have to treat her in the manner that you would treat me, Lord God. I think I'm right sometimes, Lord. I feel your commands. I love you, Lord God, but I think I'm right sometimes. And I, sometimes I do things without thinking or do things without consulting you, Lord God. But God, I never rebel against you. So God, forgive me those time, for those times when I, when I get a little pinch in my heart of anger about my situation. When I get any type of re a rebellious uh, uh, thought in my head, Lord God, knowing that it's not lined up with your word, knowing it's not lined up with your 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 will, knowing it's not lined up with your ways, Lord God. God, I speak and I pray this for everyone that they would that they would all surrender to you, Lord God. That they would show fear and reverence towards you and obey you, Lord God, and that they would show love and gratitude and thanks towards you, Lord God, and obey you. <laughs> Two times, both ways, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for placing love in my heart. Love for you and love for my family and my neighbors. Thank you for placing fear in my heart. Fear of you, Lord God. But fear of your of your power, knowing, knowing that your power is the most awesome thing in the earth, Lord God. Order our steps in your word and don't let any iniquity have dominion over us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. Okay, that's it for Morning Cup with Jesus. If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Oh, <laughs>